Welcome to Art Starts Explores. I'm Kay, and I work at Art Starts as a gallery coordinator and preparator. I started the Art Starts program three years ago, and I'm excited to bring a version online that can be enjoyed by families across the province. This week, we're going to explore using erasers. Erasers are most commonly used to fix mistakes, but they are so much more than that. When you're working to create a final version or finished product, erasers can help us work with confidence by getting rid of fingerprints, cleaning up when we color outside the lines, or even fix a mark made by a surprise sneeze. But when we explore and rethink our process for making, the need to label things as mistakes is removed, and erasers can be used in even more different ways. If you've never joined us for Explorers in the past, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about three rules or guidelines we like to follow. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by listening to how we feel, respect for others by listening and sharing, respect for the land by acknowledging the nations and indigenous people who have served and continue to serve as guardians and stewards of the land, and by doing our best to be respectful guests as we learn and play here. Second is no expectations. Try not to plan too much before trying something today. If we get a picture in our heads of how something should turn out, we can be disappointed with ourselves when it doesn't. Try to practice surprising yourself and always ask, I wonder what will happen if I... Third is that nothing is for keeps. In the gallery in Vancouver, we like to say, take nothing home with you except your experience. But since many of you are at home now, we challenge you to unmake everything you try today. This means after you finish trying something, try to disassemble or take it apart so you can use it for something else. Try not to make any completed thing, and whenever possible, pull from your recycling bin to practice. If it can still be recycled when you're done, put it back. Trying something new doesn't need to make something for keeps, and that's just what we're practicing today. Erasers are named so because they erase marks. But while you might immediately think of the pink rubber eraser when you hear the word, can you think of other kinds of erasers? And just because we want to remove a mark doesn't mean that it was a mistake. Erasers are tools, and knowing all the ways we can use our tools makes us more efficient and adaptable creators. Do you have an eraser that has a pink end and a blue end? With these erasers, the blue end is more able to erase pen marks and ink. It's supposed to be. I always end up ripping the page when I try to erase pen. The blue side has more abrasives, basically more grainy stuff to rub and scrub up ink. If you have a pink and blue eraser, try making marks on a page and rubbing out the marks using both sides. What do you notice? For today, we're going to explore using an eraser designed for pencil or graphite. For this, I have found the following things some paper. I cut up some printer paper, but you can pull from your recycling bin or reuse paper from other projects. A pencil sharpener. Any erasers you can find. Go on a hunt and see how many you can find in your house, your room, your desk, anywhere. They tend to get stuck in the bottom of drawers or backpacks. Make a stack. Next, find a pencil. I also have something called a graphite stick here. And if you've ever gotten a drawing kit or taken an art class, you might have one of these in the house. But don't worry, a normal HB pencil will work great. If you have it, some sandpaper. Art stores will sell a fancy pad of them for sketching, but you can just use any sandpaper you find. Can't find any sandpaper? That's okay. It's just another way to sharpen your pencil and eraser, so a sharpener alone is just fine. And finally, because we're going to get a little messy, I like to set up a clean station. It's just a shallow dish or plate with a piece of paper towel or rag and a little bit of water. This way we can clean our fingertips when they get messy. And when we make plans and space for respectful art making, I always encourage you to get a little messy. I like to use a piece of paper for catching any dust, testing my tools, and catching any pencil shavings as I work. You can also work over the garbage can or put out some newsprint while you explore. Start by sharpening your pencil. 
we're trying to make a long point so that you can use as much of the flat edge of graphite as you can to mark up a page. If you have multiple pencils and you found some sandpaper, try sharpening one pencil with the sharpener and the other one by rubbing the flat of your pencil over the sandpaper. How does the pencil look different when you sharpen them in these different ways? If you have one, you can also test your graphite stick and compare the marks. Next, lay down some marks onto the paper. Use your pencil or sticks to put a whole bunch of graphite onto the page. Try turning the page and use different parts of your pencil, sharpening as you go along. Remember, there is no wrong or right way to do this. Ask yourself, what happens if I... and then test it out. For my test, I also have a tin full of other mark making tools. If you happen to have some charcoal or Conte, these are also often found in drawing kits. You could try using some of these to mark up the page. If you don't have any at home, you can watch what happens here and then compare what you're doing with what I did. Fingers feel messy? Just touch or rub your fingers on the wash station. Check it out. You're practicing another kind of erasing. Washing is just another way to say erasing. What happens when you use your eraser on your fingers? Does it work? Now that you have some different surfaces, try using each of your erasers on each of your surfaces. What do you notice? Are some erasers better at erasing some marks? Does the shape or texture of your eraser affect how much you're able to erase? If you have a really square or sharp edged eraser, what happens when you try drawing with your eraser? This is where your sandpaper can help. If you want to make a sharp edge to your eraser, just rub aside along the sandpaper. If you don't have any sandpaper, asking an adult with a sharp pair of scissors or utility knife to cut off an edge also works. No adult? No knife? No sandpaper? That's okay. You can also just rub the eraser on another piece of paper until you get the edge you like. Can you figure out another safe way to make a sharp edge on your eraser? Keep erasing. Even if you've already erased a section, what happens when you keep erasing? Add more pencil, and then erase again. If the paper rips, that's okay too. Now you have two pieces of paper to work with. What happens when you crinkle the paper and try to erase it? What happens when you erase one page onto another? Try everything you can think of. In previous weeks, we focused on more general themes related to a process or product rather than focusing on a tool itself. For our series on shadows, we explored different ways to make a shadow. In this case, we're focusing on the tool, erasers, and exploring different ways to use an eraser to produce or make different marks. There are lots of different ways to explore art making, and by changing our focus from how to make a thing to with what should I use to make a thing, you open a whole new series of questions. Remember, you can always go back and rewatch one of our videos or host your own art making session with your family, classmates, and friends where you explore a theme with different tools, in a different location, and with different people. What happens when you switch something up when you're exploring? Be sure to download our activity resource page this week for additional questions you can ask each other, as well as some words you can use to challenge yourself when you're practicing using your eraser. And don't forget, when you're all done playing and exploring, try to take things apart and put them away again so that the only things that are left behind are the pictures in your brain. Thank you for watching this video today. If you have any suggestions, please let us know. If you're watching this in June 2020, we'll be hosting a live art making session on erasing this weekend where you can make at home and ask questions or watch me practice and get some inspiration. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram at Artstarts. I hope to see you then.